So, hi. <laughs> so I'm Reinhard, um, and I hope my slides will appear here. So I'm here today to talk about what I believe and what many people start to believe nowadays is the future of wind energy. And what's a better way to start a talk about the future than talking about the past? Actually, when we look at the history of wind turbines, the first ones were deployed at, an en at the end of the 19th century. But the basic idea really stayed the same. It's basically a number of wings attached to a central hub. Um, one thing that did change radically is the height of the turbines. So when we look at the height of the turbines nowadays, they would really radically change the skyline of Antwerp when we would place them in the middle of the city with heights going up to 180 meters. But why do they actually are so high? Basically, that's due to the wind. When we look at wind power, um, the, the amount of energy you can get from the wind scales with the cube of the wind speed. And wind, well, the higher you go in the sky, the more wind there is. So there's higher wind speeds, more consistent winds. And basically, that's the holy grail of wind power, because you can make more power for a higher percentage of the time. So you might ask, why don't you just build taller wind turbines to harvest these high altitude winds? Uh, basically, when you want to double the height of a wind turbine, you need eight times the material, and that's quite heavy, expensive. The parts get huge, the transport becomes really bad. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's really not, not the, the, the great option. So, when we analyze how a wind turbine works, actually, it's three wings flying in the sun. Uh, with the wing tips doing all the work because a wing is more efficient the faster it goes. So basically the outer third of the wind turbine blades accounts for more than 60% of the energy produced. So when we would like to build a more efficient high wind turbine, we want to get rid of those inner parts of the blades that are slow and actually just are there to support the wing tips. So w when you look at the left of the slide, there's basically a tower you don't need it anymore because there's no wing tips to support the, the, the there's no wings to support the wing tips. So um, yeah, basically another nice feature of a wing that, that's equivalent to the wing tip is that if you attach a cable to it, you can fly it like a kite, like like a normal kite you fly on the beach, but then large scale. So basically by cutting away the tower and just keeping two wing tips, you can have a very, very, very efficient windmill that is very easy to go up higher in the sky because kite, that's what kites like to do. They go up in the sky and fly high. So, but how do you make power? Uh, basically, you should imagine it as two tethered airplanes, like inverted airplanes. They're just flying around in circles in the sky. You attach propellers to them. They're driven by the wind like min minuscule wind turbines. And they produce the equivalent amount of energy than the large, large, large wind turbine does because they're flying so fast in circles, the, the, the wings actually get up to speeds like 100 meters a second. So the, the wind turbines are really, really, really turning fast and are very efficient. And then the power they produce is sent back to the ground by the cable. Another way of doing it is actually using the traction force of the kite on the cable. Um, so what they basically do is fly a spiral away from the attachment point of the, of the cable on the ground, unreeling a cable on a drum that's connected to a generator. So basically, they unreel the cable, uh, generating electricity on the ground. And then, yeah, you've got power. But obviously, you, you don't have cables with unlimited length. So at some point, you've got to come back to the ground. And Planes are really good at getting back to the ground, but not always safely. Yeah? So what, what we like to do at the end of such a generation cycle is dive them back to the ground really fast and reeling, reeling the cable back in. And then once they're back to, to their starting position, repeat the cycle over and over and over again, producing power. You might say, well, that's quite stupid. You first let them produce power and then have to reel them back in. But actually, because they're really efficient at flying back down, um, <laughs> When, when, when you look at it on the graph, you actually see them like reel, reeled in for a certain amount of time. That's the red part. And then produced uh, over time like a certain amount of energy. Uh, then reeled back in, a certain amount of energy produced. So that's, yeah, that's how, how this pumping cycle works. 
So that's basically the two ways of producing energy with, with power. What does it look like? We've got three wind turbines here, producing three megawatts in total. Um, what would it look like if we replace it with a kite-powered central thing? Like this, you, you don't re really even see it, but that's the equivalent of three megawatts. Um, you, might, you might know these ones here on the coast in Belgium, the 6C power uh, plants. What would it look like if we replaced them with kites? Like this. So we replace the big, big, big towers with like a tiny little structure and fly kites from them. So that's how the future could and should look like with a really clever use of material. Yeah, just create green energy. So this is what our kites look like at the moment at the university. <laughs> so basically it's like 50 pages of this green white coat. So. And then sometimes we end up at the bottom right corner that's cut off, but it actually ends up in a crash. That's, that still needs some bug fixing to do, so, but we're getting there. Um, this is actually one of the planes we fly indoors at the moment at the university. Oh, um, yeah, well, whatever. So <laughs> um, uh, this, this plane can produce enough power to power your house, actually. So this is what what size you should imagine to power a house. It's not the size we're aiming for, but I'm actually not the only one who believes that kites are the future of wind energy. Uh, at the Airborne Wind Con Energy Conference this May, there were 160 people attending, and the number is growing fast. I hope I've converted you guys to believe in kites for wind energy now. Um, these guys, the Wright brothers, used kites to create a revolution in aviation. We want to do the same with kites in, in, in the energy market then, obviously. 